Hello, and welcome to Gus McDoll's Strategy and Tactics, and thank you to our subscribers. In this series, we use the missions in the game Firefight to illustrate one or more aspects of World War II infantry tactics at the company level and below. In this campaign, we are playing through the Battle of France as the French, with eight battles over the course of May and June 1940. Everyone knows about the historical outcome, a French operational and strategic defeat at the hands of the Germans. But I want to see if the French, using historical weapons, tactics and doctrine, can defeat the Germans at the tactical level. In this episode, counterattack towards Artois Saint Martin, lead your French infantry and armour in a desperate counterattack against the invading German army. The sleepy French village of Artois Saint Martin lies in a valley and is surrounded by farmland, woods and orchards. It rests on a major intersection of roads, making its capture strategically vital. Each episode, we conduct basic mission analysis, develop and analyse possible courses of action, then decide and execute the plan in real time, followed by lessons learned. Please remember to like the video and subscribe for more great strategy and tactics content. And if you want to buy me a coffee, the links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. The Germans are striking south from the River Somme. They are heading to Paris. We must stop them, or all is lost. This is a map of the battle space, overlain with terrain features in red. If you're interested, these maps are available in the game folder. From the bottom left, the western road approaches Artois Saint Martin from the southwest, in the low ground between hills and ridges. A church and graveyard sits on one hill. On another is a single tree, let's call this One Tree Hill. The road ends at a crossroads near a pond in the town centre of Artois Saint Martin. A creek line runs from the pond along the road to the east. At the road junction is a farm, and to the south a hill with a windmill. Let's call it Windmill Hill. The eastern road runs south from the road junction through wooded hills and past orchards. The numerous hills and ridges afford good observation and fields of fire over the intervening low ground and forward slopes. For example, the western road amounts to a long fire lane covered by the church and one tree hill. However, the woods on the outskirts of town limit observation, especially the woods to the east. The woods also provide concealed approaches to the town, and each of the hills and ridges provides terrain shielding and thus cover. I have marked the ridges with dotted lines on the map. Each of the ridge lines is an obstacle. Either you cross the ridge and are silhouetted, making you a target, or the terrain channels you into the low ground, making you a target. Each area of low ground is a zone, isolated from the next, its own little tactical problem. To the west, the ridges generally channel movement to the northeast. In the centre, the ridges present natural lines of resistance. In each case, the low ground is an engagement area for weapons on the high ground. In addition to the crossroads at the centre of town, the hills are key terrain, as they offer a marked advantage in terms of observation, firepower, and the ability to control movement towards the town in the adjacent low ground. The terrain complex of One Tree Hill and Windmill Hill is decisive terrain. This complex overlooks the town and also overlooks every avenue of approach. I've marked three avenues of approach. First, moving northeast up the western road or in the valleys. Second, moving north up the middle and across the ridge lines. And third, up the eastern road. The French are attacking from the south and the Germans are to the north. I assess the Germans will take advantage of the high ground and use a two-up, one-back defensive posture. One platoon will take the church covering the western road, another platoon will take Windmill Hill covering the eastern road, and a third platoon will remain in depth in the town as a reserve. The Germans will put a key weapon system such as a tank on One Tree Hill where it can cover down western and eastern roads and the low ground to its front and place another weapon system on the ridge behind the farm, covering the town, crossroads and eastern road. Finally, they will place a mortar north of the town, taking advantage of its high angle of fire to remain covered behind terrain. I do not know the forces at my disposal until the mission starts. From previous battles, I'll assume I have some infantry squads with machine guns, a mortar and some armour. The first course of action is an attack on the left. The infantry would advance up Western Road and assault the church as an intermediate objective under cover of smoke. The infantry would then advance to secure the town as the primary objective. The armour would support the advance in bounds, using the high ground for successive support-by-fire positions. The mortars would remain in the rear 
behind terrain. This is a fairly conventional plan. The key risk is getting bogged down assaulting the church, which looks as solid as the Rock of Gibraltar. But the plan will succeed, if the armour makes it to Centre Ridge, if the armour wins the firefight against any Germans on One Tree Hill and Windmill Hill, if the armour brings sufficient firepower against the church, and if the infantry can maintain momentum while assaulting uphill into a graveyard. That is a lot of ifs. So the second course of action is an attack in the centre, moving up the successive ridge lines. Infantry and armour would advance in turn, each covering the other's movement. Centre ridge is the intermediate objective. From there, artillery smoke will obscure One Tree Hill while armour takes Windmill Hill. Then the infantry will advance to One Tree Hill while the armour leapfrogs to the ridge overlooking the town. Then the infantry will secure the town as the primary objective. Again, this plan maximises the enemy's defensive advantage. Infantry and armour cresting Centre Ridge will take fire from the Church, One Tree Hill and Windmill Hill all at the same time, and with or without smoke will need to win that firefight to advance. Any advance up the centre also risks enfilade fire from the surrounding high ground. The third course of action is an attack on the right. Infantry would clear the woods, allowing the armour to advance up the road to the high ground near the farm. The armour would form a base of fire to allow the infantry to take first Windmill Hill, then One Tree Hill, under cover of smoke. The armour would then leapfrog to the ridge overlooking the town. From there, they could control the town as the infantry moved to secure the primary objective. This plan takes advantage of the covered approach through the woods to dislocate the enemy's likely defensive positions on the high ground. Also, the axis of attack means the infantry will assault Windmill Hill, then One Tree Hill in sequence, rather than at the same time. The key risk is an ambush in the woods, so caution in the approach will be required. Article 2. Tank Protection Tanks are particularly vulnerable when they cross a ridge such that they find themselves exposed to enemy observation and consequently to the adjusted fire of the artillery, while they cease to be supported by the base of infantry fires and they disappear from view from friendly observation. This is the battle space. To the north is the town and the primary objective. The intermediate objective is to the northeast. Between these objectives and the French are the ridges and forests south of the town. Let's review our forces using the information panel on the bottom right of the screen. This shows soldier statistics and vehicle controls. Unit 1 is a Shah B1 BIS. It is armed with a 75mm SA-35 howitzer, 47mm SA-35 gun and rival machine gun. It is commanded by Lieutenant Levesque. He is an overall command of the operation. Unit 2 is a Renault R35. It is armed with a 37mm SA-18 gun and rival machine gun. It is commanded by Sergeant Jagu. Unit 3 is a Somoa S35. It is armed with a 47mm SA-35 gun and rival machine gun. It is commanded by Lieutenant Marshal. Unit 4 is an infantry section commanded by Sous-Lieutenant Olivier. The section has an FM2429 light machine gun, Berthier Model 1916 carbines, Maz-36 rifles, F1 grenades, and a VB grenade launcher with 12 rounds. Unit 5 is an infantry section commanded by Sergeant Le Bon. Unit 6 is an infantry section commanded by Sous Lieutenant Guyard. Unit 7 is an infantry section commanded by Sous Lieutenant Auger.
Unit 8 is a medium mortar team armed with a Brunt Model 2731 81mm mortar with 60 rounds. The team is commanded by Soldat Antoine. Let's position our forces for battle. The tanks will remain behind the ridgeline to the south until called forward. The infantry will take position either side of the road ready to clear the woods. And so we begin. Olivier's section moves forward on the left. Le Bon's section moves forward on the right. The Somo S-35 moves to the left flank. The engine noise will cover the infantry advance. The infantry move cautiously through the woods. Clearing both sides of the road will allow the tanks to move forward quickly. Auger on the right and Guyard on the left both move up to support. The Samoa is in position and probes forward. The advancing infantry have reached the Y junction without incident. After a short pause, they continue to advance. The Shah B1 Bis now moves to the right flank. The Samoa on the left flank continues to probe forward. The engine noise from the Samoa will focus the Germans on the left flank, while the French infantry sneak up on the right flank. The R-35 moves up the ridge line to scout. Its engine noise also masks the movement of the Shah B-1 Bis on the right flank. No sign of the Germans. The Samoa continues to probe forward.
the Sha B1 bis moves up to the Y junction. It moves to the right. The Renault has not spotted anything so far and moves to the next hill. The Somua has completed its probe and now withdraws noisily to the south. Still no sign of the Germans. Olivier's section now takes position in the woods at the base of Windmill Hill. Le Bon's section moves up to the creek line. Guyard and Auger's sections move forward in support. Get down! Contact. Anti-tank gun on Windmill Hill. And a second on One Tree Hill. And troops to the north. The mortar opens a fire mission on Windmill Hill. Open fire! Get down! The anti-tank guns open fire. Olivia's section falls back. As does Guyard's section. The Somua shifts to the right, as does the R-35. Rifle and submachine gun fire from the farm buildings to the north. Soldar Cotton is lightly wounded by shrapnel in the left leg. Cotton is killed by shrapnel in the head. Olivia orders his section to hurry back. The mortar will deal with this threat. In Guyard's section, Soldat Lecoq is killed by an HE shell in the abdomen. Guyard section falls back. Le Bon moves up to the creek. The Sha B1 bis moves up the dirt track in support. The R35 moves up to the Y junction and the Somua S-35 moves to the main road. The mortar has moved to fire for effect. The first round destroys the adjacent windmill. The mortar opens another fire mission. Auger's section moves up on the right flank.
the Shah B1 BIS advances to the creek line to provide overwatch to Le Bon's section as they cross. Soldat Becker in Guyard's section is lightly wounded by shrapnel in the right leg. The Shah B1 moves up. Get down! Contact, half track, on the hill. Fire rips into Le Bon's section. Killing Soldat Guibert and Guiton and wounding three others. The Renault R35 moves up in support. The Shah B1 Bis advances and the half track disappears behind the hill. The S-35 moves up to the Y-junction. The Shah finds the half-track. And destroys a Sonderkraftfazoid Zweihandert Einen Fünfzig by APC shell through hull upper left. But the second anti-tank gun hits the tank on the hull lower left with an APCR shell, and the Shah B1 BIS wisely withdraws. The mortar is firing into the German infantry, and the R35 moves up to provide suppressing fire. Le Bon's section cannot advance until the German infantry are dislodged. The mortar now shifts attention back to the first anti-tank gun. Open fire! Ah! The French call an artillery fire mission on the second anti-tank gun on One Tree Hill. The German infantry now have two tanks in their rear and have lost their supporting half-track. Auger's section is in position on the right. The Samoa moves to the dirt road to support the right flank. The German infantry break and flee across the open field. Le Bon's section now advances. He has lost three dead and two wounded. Soldat Bauer, wounded in the initial exchange, has bled to death. The first anti-tank gun, a 3.7cm Pac-36, is destroyed by a mortar shell blast. 
The Germans in the open field are machine gunned. With the first anti-tank gun knocked out, Olivier's section moves up to the base of Windmill Hill. Guyard's section also moves up, as does the S-35. The 4th artillery round destroys the second 3.7cm Pac-36 anti-tank gun. The artillery check fire. There are still Germans in the farm buildings, but they are surrounded. The Shah moves behind the hill. Time to prepare for the attack on the town itself. Meanwhile, reinforcements have arrived. Unit 9 is an infantry section commanded by Sous Lieutenant Roche. Unit 10 is an infantry section commanded by Sous Lieutenant Galland. Both sections move up on the right. Soldat Tellier in Olivier's section is severely wounded by a bullet in the chest. Infantry have been spotted in the town and the mortar opens a fire mission. The tanks move up to the ridge line overlooking the town. The French now control the intermediate objective. The Bond section crosses the road towards the farm buildings. The tanks on the ridge target German troops in the open. and then advance into the town.
a German artillery shell lands on the right flank. Time to get out of there, and Auger's section advances onto the hill opposite. Le Bon also advances. Olivier orders his men up Windmill Hill. The Renault has spotted another German half-track. The R-35 destroys a Sonderkraftfahrzeug 251 by APCR shell through hull upper left. On the right flank, Soldat Pujol is killed by an artillery shell blast in the chest. Auger orders his men up the ridgeline. Reinforcements have arrived in the form of a second Somo S-35. The Renault captures the primary objective. The German guns fire. Auger's men need to hurry along as do Le Bon's. Oh. German shells slam in, shell blasts killing Caporal Le Breton and Soldat Mallette. The German gun crews fire at Olivier's men as they advance. More German units are spotted in the western half of town and in the church. Guillard's section moves to Olivier's left flank. Galland's section moves up to the creek line. Unit 11 is a Somoa S-35. It is armed with a 47mm SA-35 gun and rival machine gun. It is commanded by Sous Lieutenant Antoine. The second Somoa moves up on the left, conducting another probe. The first Somoa is firing at the anti-tank gun crew on One Tree Hill. Le Bon and Auger's section now advance to the eastern edge of town. Sous Lieutenant Roche's section moves through the woods behind Guillard. Olivier's section has cleared Windmill Hill and is engaging the Germans on One Tree Hill. The Shah B1 Bis has spotted German infantry in the eastern part of town. The tank moves forward to suppress. The mortar opens a fire mission. Open fire! The R35 spots another German half track moving to retake the primary objective. and destroys a Sonderkraftfahrzeug by APCR shell through the hull upper left. The R-35 retakes the primary objective. The German anti-tank gun crew have had enough and withdraw from their exposed position on One Tree Hill. The mortar rounds slam in.
and Le Bon's section enters the houses opposite. Auger's section takes a flanking position in the houses to the north. More reinforcements have arrived, a Renault R35 and a Hotchkiss H39. Olivier's section now advances to take One Tree Hill. Machine gun nest, west of the pond in the centre of town. The mortar opens a fire mission on the machine gun nest. The French also call in an artillery fire mission on the position. The second Somwa advances from the south to put further pressure on the Germans. Unit 12 is a Hotchkiss H39. It is armed with a 37mm SA-38 gun and rival machine gun. It is commanded by Sergeant Foray. Unit 13 is a Renault R35. It is armed with a 37mm SA-18 gun and rival machine gun. It is commanded by Sergeant Varin. The tanks move up on the right flank. The French units in the town hold position, waiting for the artillery and mortar fire missions to deal with the machine gun nest. But Le Bon's section crosses the street, covered by the Shabi one bis. They still have a row of houses to protect them from shrapnel. The second Somwa to the south engages the German anti-tank gun crew west of One Tree Hill. Victory! Counterattack. Lead your French infantry and armour in a desperate counterattack against the invading German army. French forces, 84 survived, 4 wounded, 8 killed, no vehicles lost. German forces, 27 survived, 3 wounded, 28 killed, 1 surrendered, 3 vehicles lost, and 2 anti-tank guns lost. You did very well in quickly capturing the objective and took negligible losses although there was only moderate opposition. Your commanders rate your performance as excellent. 3 gold stars. So, what did we learn? At the outset, I identified the risk of ambush in the approach. As a result, the infantry advanced through the woods cautiously and cleared the way for the tanks. But the ambush bit me anyway. My intent was for the infantry company to form up on the high ground in the woods east of Eastern Road, and only assault when the armour had seized the high ground near the farm and armour and artillery suppressed Windmill Hill. But I stuck my neck out too far. 
As a result, Sous-Lieutenant Olivier's section was ambushed from Windmill Hill, and Sergeant Le Bon's section ambushed from the farm buildings. This was when I took most of my casualties. Luckily, the close proximity of the tanks allowed me to regain the initiative and press on with the assault, but I so easily could have been trapped in the forest, taking casualties and unable to advance. This demonstrates a couple of things. First, the strength of the defensive position around Windmill Hill. Second, the importance of combination des armes or combined arms in the attack. The armour needed the protection of the infantry to avoid ambush in the woods, and the infantry needed the firepower of the armour to recover the initiative in advance, and they both needed artillery to destroy the anti-tank guns and machine gun nests. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and donate, and stay tuned for the next episode.